How do? I'm Mark from Morrigan's Creations and as promised this week we're doing a little bit more of an in-depth tutorial on how I did the glowing weapons for last week's Hellcast Eternal. Now that video did really well and I'm really grateful for everybody that subscribed from then so I hope that this video is quite informative and if you're new here don't forget to drop that subscription. So we're starting off with Ivory from AK Interactive and that's just going to be a base coat over our matte black primer. As always with lighter paints you're going to want to do a fair few coats of this. I think I did maybe four. AK Interactive is quite opaque anyway so if you're using Citadel paints you'll probably need to do a few more. But painting this over the entirety of the blade and just spilling over onto the hilt. Now I do just want to stress that for how I do this technique, I use contrast paints. It is possible to do with other paints, so if you want to see that in future, let me know. But yeah, this is contrast paint. So as you can see here, I'm using Bad Moon Yellow, and that's going to work as our main sort of base coat above that ivory color. Now I know a lot of people tend to do a bit of a gradient when they're painting stuff like this. But I like to add a bit of texture so I make sure that I don't put any of this bad moon yellow over onto the hilt I wait until I get to the next step which is a yandan yellow now I'm gonna add this to all the edges as I want the main hot point of this blade to be in the middle not going on the spine or on the edge they're gonna be the colder areas and as you can see the difference between bad moon yellow and a yandan yellow the end in yellow tends to be a little more on the orange side which as we move through the rest of the colours is going to help sort of do a blend from the hottest point to the coldest point. So I have thinned this down a little bit with water and I am spreading it sometimes across the middle of the blade just to make a little bit of difference in there but we are going to start applying that to the hilt. Because I've chose to water down this paint it is going to take probably about two to three coats to get up to the opacity that I want as I want it to be a nice little blend going okay, from like I said the hottest point in the center to the coldest point on the cutting edge Now that we're moving into some of the colder areas of the model, we're going to move in with Griff Hound Orange. As I'm working through these layers, I'm making sure that I'm painting smaller areas each time, which is going to help us with that gradient. And as you can see, we are kind of stippling in some areas just to hint at a bit of that texture. I do think it's quite successful when people do a nice flat gradient going all the way across. But like I say, I enjoy the gradient a bit more and it looks a bit more realistic to me bit more of a hand forged blade. Once again we've added that to the hilt as well because now that we've moved away from the main blade the metal's going to start getting a little bit cooler so we're going to be focusing more of the Griff Hound Orange there. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here and that's just so that you can see how successful I believe this technique is and to me I think that's mainly down to the stippling. I think adding the texture is really making this a bit more realistic, like I say, a bit more hand forged and in all honesty it adds a bit more individuality to each of your models. So no two weapons are going to look exactly the same. Now by all means it's perfectly fine to stop at this point but if you want to go a little bit further you can come back in with some more of that AK interactive or a white paint of your choice and just stipple that into a bit more of the smaller area right in the center of the blade you could do this earlier in the process make it a little bit more streamlined but I like to do it towards the end as I can focus a bit more of that overspill of texture 
and then you move in with a nice damp brush and that's just going to help feather out that texture just a little bit and of course it's going to help you clean up some of them areas that you didn't want to get paint on and if for whatever reason you think that that's a little too bright of a center you can move back in with some more bad moon yellow it's going to bring it down just a little bit but still increasing that contrast which is ever so important when painting blades like these And as a final step, I come in just at the very tip and add some Basilicarnum Grey. Now this is just going to bring down the temperature just at the very end, the furthest points away from the heat source. And with that, we have completed painting our red hot blades. So if you enjoyed, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.